a 19-year-old kid tried to ram his truck into the White House. Did you guys hear about that? 19-year-old kid goes, rents a U-Haul truck, rams it into the pylons outside of the, uh, the park, Lafayette Park, which is outside of the White House. <laughs> then when the cops arrest him, they pull out a big old swastika flag and lay it on the ground. Hmm, another white supremacist, Nazi piece of shit. This time, trying to actually kill the president. Plot twist, this is another example of a non-white, white supremacist. Funny how those keep popping up. I mean... Here's the thing about that, folks, right? We kind of went into a lot of sort of the history of that in our last stream from last week when we talked about the uh, the shooter in Allen, Texas. If you didn't get a chance to see our stream last week, it's uh, it's the video is up on YouTube right now. Please go check it out. So anyway, yes, there are non-white Nazis and non-white white supremacists out there. As much as that seems like it would be an oxymoron, as much as it seems like that should not make any sense, it is definitely a thing. I, we don't really, I don't really see the need to go on that all over again, but you know, the, the quick and short summary is that it is a big problem in South America and stuff like that. Even in Los Angeles, even, there are Nazis of Latino descent <laughs> right. Like literal national socialists of Latino descent. There's lots of reasons for that. You know, it has to do with sort of the prevalence of white supremacy culture online and that kind of thing, you know, and then also people identifying as white, even though they may have uh, mixed ancestry or something like that. So lots of reasons behind it. Please check out my stream from last week. We talk a little bit about that. We talk a little bit about the Free Arab League and then white supremacist gangs in Brazil and South America, that, that kind of thing. Blah, 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 right? This guy, however, was a Indian person. That is somebody from India who was a teenager, 19-year-old kid, who was also from Missouri and was basically a Nazi. I don't have his name in front of me here exactly. Let me see. Um, well, I'm, we're going to look at some of the tweets and stuff, but it'll say what his name is. Anyway, when the cops questioned him, he said that he wanted to kill the president. That was his, that was his actual uh, motivation for ramming that truck into those pylons. Uh, so this is the actual quote. He wanted to kill the president, take over the United States. The quote is, kill the president if that's what I have to do and would hurt anyone that stands in my way. Apparently that's what he really actually said. Said that he admired Nazis. Says that Nazis have a great history. He admires their authoritarian nature. He admires their stance on eugenics. And also their one, their aspiring one world order. Apparently, I guess if that's if the Nazis were to take over says that he looks up to Hitler because Hitler was a strong leader. So yeah, the guy was definitely a Nazi. Uh, the driver is currently facing multiple charges. Assault with a deadly weapon, reckless operation of a motor vehicle, and threatening to kill, kidnap, or harm the president, which is a charge in, of its own. You are not allowed to even threaten the president, if you guys didn't know that. You don't even have to actually try to threaten the president if you, I mean, to kill the president. If you just write something or say it, like if you, if you say it like online or in a, in a recording, something like that, and it gets out there, that's good enough. That's a threat to the president and the, the secret service will be knocking on your door to see how serious your threat is. And if it's credible, because you are not allowed to do that. That is against law. You will go to jail <laughs> for threatening the president. So don't ever do it in any way, shape, or form whatsoever. So here's the thing, folks, right? 
we mentioned that this guy is not exactly white. And just like last week with the Texas Allen, uh, Allen Texas uh, mall shooter, the conservatives and MAGA chuds and other white supremacists out there are losing their absolute minds over it. Because... Just like last week, they don't understand that somebody who isn't exactly white can be a Nazi. They don't understand that. In their mind, National Socialism, Nazis, are just white people and only white people. They don't understand how somebody who doesn't fit what their idea of what white is would follow that ideology right I mean to be honest I have the same predilection towards that as well it doesn't make sense to me why somebody would want to like why would you support a group of people who would basically kill you I mean this guy you know this shooter or not shooter excuse me this driver I guess is somebody that the actual real-life Nazis would have put on a train car and uh, thrown in a concentration camp. So why the hell would you identify him? It just seems illogical to me. So I can understand why people are, of course, confused. But you have to look at reality, and this is the actual reality. And just like you know, the Allen, Texas shooter, mall shooter last week was you know, a Hispanic Nazi, this guy is an Indian Nazi. <laughs> I mean, this is real life, folks. Real life doesn't always fit to your your stereotypes, right? It doesn't always conform to what you think it should be. You have to look at the actual evidence. You have to look what's there right in front of your eyes and act accordingly, right? But they can't understand it. So I want to show you guys a bunch of tweets and stuff like that. Let's go ahead and let's see here first off I've got this tweet here let's turn that off let's turn on my laptop and I think we can just make this oh that's weird why did it do that okay I think we could just make this full size here okay this is from a guy named Miss Chief U-Haul truck crashes into a barricade near the White House and had a Nazi flag and a backpack this has the stench of a false flag with a Fed driving, and I don't mean FedEx. And you can actually see here, if we click on this little video, this is the actual footage of the guy you ramming the, the thing. Of this U-Haul truck right. rammed into security barriers mm. protecting Lafayette Park. Let's get rid of the sound there. Anyway, yeah, you can kind of see the guy ran into the, the pylons a couple of times and then just got hung up on it. So he really didn't get anywhere close to actually getting close to the White House. Apparently the guy didn't have any weapons either. I mean, I don't know how he thought he was going to kill the president and anyone who got in his way if he didn't have any weapons. I'm assuming he wanted to run him over with a truck. But was he thinking, was he just going to do kung fu on people or something? Once he got into the White House, was he just going to go double dragon on them or some shit like that? Be like Bruce Lee and like, I don't know, dodge bullets and stuff like in the Matrix? Is that what he was thinking? <laughs> but here, want to point out the reaction here. Since, you know, it has to be a false flag, right? With a Fed driving. Because they can't understand why a non-white person might be a Nazi. So, automatically... That's the narrative. It must all be a false flag. It must be feds, whatever. Here's another one. Okay. This is from Our Conspiracy on Reddit. <laughs> okay. Race is only important when the media wants to push the white versus black narrative, but an Indian white supremacist Nazi? Sorry, that's not part of the script. Basically, um, saying, oh, it's all a conspiracy. Oh, obviously... This guy's not white. How can he be a white supremacist? Here is another one from Reddit. This is from Top Minds of Reddit, of course, which is an awesome sub. All of you guys go out there, join Top Minds of Reddit. It's where we, uh, we get together and make fun of conspiracy theorists. 
Here we go. Yes, very normal. Police often pull evidence out of a terrorist truck and lay them on the neatly, <laughs> lay them out neatly in clear view of the media to record their every move. Police do this all the time. Well, maybe they did this time because they wanted to see what was in the back of the truck. And I doubt that the police actually did this for the media. You know, here's the thing, folks, right? Folks, right? If this really was a false flag, don't you think you'd want to have more than just a Nazi flag in the back of the truck? Don't you think that's what, like, if it was actually a false flag and you really wanted to condemn this guy, you know, wouldn't you put some more stuff just besides a flag in there? Maybe you'd put a couple of crosses that he could burn later or something like that, right? Maybe you might actually get, like, you know, a white person then if it was actually a false flag <laughs> and you wanted people to think it was white supremacy, right? Like that. I mean, if, if we're hiring people, maybe that's what you would do. So, I mean, don't you think that if, if it was a false flag, these would be the things you would do? Don't you think you would need more evidence than just a Nazi flag in the back? How come the guy didn't have any guns? He didn't have any guns. Right? Don't you think they would have planted a couple of pistols and some AR-15s and like 5,000 rounds of ammo in the back and maybe some hand grenades or something if they wanted him to look like he was a, if he was a bona fide terrorist that actually had a chance of murdering the president? Don't you think that's what they would have done? Right? I mean, as far as false flags go, this seems like a very lazy attempt. So which one is more likely to be true? That the CIA set this up for what? Why, what was the point? What, to make white supremacists look bad? Well, everybody already hates Nazis and white supremacists anyway. <laughs> so why would they need to do this? Or is it more likely that this guy, this Indian person, who, I mean, I don't know if he's actually from India. He's most likely, most likely not. He's only 19. He's probably an American citizen born and raised here, right? But this person of Indian descent, what's more likely? Is it more likely that he got radicalized online from places like 4chan and truth social and getter and all those other places like that and twitter nowadays now it's a straight up twitter you don't even have to go to those other ripoffs anymore those conservative nazi twitter ripoffs you can just go straight to twitter get it straight from fucking all of the nazis that hang out on twitter now like cat turd and shit DC Drano and all those other fucking assholes. They're just out there in the open spreading their racist conspiracy bullshit. I mean, which one of those is more likely? Insane person radicalized online by a bunch of online white supremacists and assholes or evil secret plot by the CIA and the FBI and stuff just to make white people look bad? <laughs> which one do you fucking think it is, folks? I mean, I don't know. Outcomes razor and everything, right? Speaking of that, it appears that a couple of people have thought of that angle, because here is another comment that I thought was worth saving. Why can't they hire white people to play white supremacists? This is some kind of affirmative action thing. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> now, here's the thing, right? I think this person is joking, but then you get the exact, the next comment, you are so close. And then that one <laughs> seems to be completely serious. <laughs> or at least, you know, this guy seems to be like, okay, it's not a false flag. Well, can you explain it? Can you, can you run along a, can you run a false flag and demonize a group of people, not even use a guy who looks like he's from that group? <laughs> Easy answer. You don't <laughs> because it's not a false flag. <laughs> Oh my god. I, I just, that, that exchange, I thought that shit was funny. <laughs> just, anyway, moving on. Of course, most people out there actually do think it is a false flag. Here's another one from our conspiracy. This is by far the most pathetic attempt at a president's life I've ever seen. The CIA really needs to step up their false flag game. Instead of, I don't know, taking the flag into evidence and laying it out besides the truck so everyone can get a picture... Also, the guy rents an empty U-Haul and crashes it into the barrier going about 10 miles an hour. That's less than half of what, you, what they ask you to do in a school zone. <laughs> See, here's the thing. It, it's so ridiculous 
then why do you think it's a false flag? It, it's, it is ridiculous, right? Think of all the ridiculous things you would have to believe to believe that this is actually is a false flag. You would have to believe that this guy is a CIA agent. You'd have to believe that someone in the CIA thought it was a good idea to set all of this up. So stupid as it looks, because it is stupid. I mean, think about it. Indian Nazi rents a U-Haul, a huge, a giant U-Haul like that, and the only thing he has in it is a Nazi flag, and gets stopped, like, even before he gets close to the White House. Like, for what? And what is the purpose behind it? To make Nazis look like assholes? When everybody already thinks they look like assholes? It's the dumbest fucking shit ever. So that's the thing you gotta remember. Like, conspiracy theorists are fucking idiots. They are. Conspiracy theorists are stupid as hell. Right? They don't research anything. <laughs> they don't actually read. They don't use their goddamn brains. And after years and years and years of filling your head with idiotic conspiracy bullshit, you lose the ability to discern reality from fantasy. Right? It's like your it's like your bullshit meter gets a permanently switched off and you'll believe as a result of that any kind of stupid bullshit that somebody tells you, you'll just instantly believe it. There are people right now who will believe that this is this actually was a false flag, and they will believe it for the rest of their lives, right? Remember, folks, when it's a conspiracy, it doesn't have to be true. It doesn't even have to sound plausible. You just have to repeat it over and over and over. It's, it's like a religion, you know? Very much like a religion. Two people fuck in a garden after eating an apple and talking to a, a talking snake and create the human race it's the dumbest shit you've ever heard in your entire life it makes zero sense there's no fucking way it can be true but people repeat it over and over and over and before you know it you have Christianity <laughs> right that's, that's it's the same dynamic it's the same this is the same part of our brains that wants to believe that the entire human race is descended from two people after, who ate an apple, right? When they were butt naked in a garden talking to a snake. The same part of our brain who wants to believe that also wants to believe that this 19-year-old kid is part of some secret clandestine CIA plot to, like, make white people look bad or some shit. <laughs> Seriously. Moving on, but at least some people are starting to not buy the whole fucking it was a false flag narrative, right? Got another one. Uh, let's see. Is this the one that we just looked at? Nope, here we go. This is from a guy named Travis. How you doing, Travis? Okay, let's see what Travis has to say. Huge update. The driver has been named as Sai Varshith Kandula. That's his name. 19-year-old from Chesterfield, Missouri, the man is apparently a white supremacist who is wielding a Nazi flag and rammed the gates of the White House. Democrats aren't even trying anymore. You couldn't find one white racist guy to do this even when your party is full of racist white guys. This is what the uh, actual driver looks like. Since he's not white, it obviously must be a false flag. Democrats aren't even trying anymore. <laughs> like the Democratic Party now put this together. Now, here's the thing. Is there any evidence that this is a false flag at all? Did they find any evidence of that? I mean, here's the thing, because if it if it actually was a false flag, there would be evidence, right? You would be able to look at who this person is, this 19-year-old kid. You'd be able to look into his background. You'd be able to see, like, okay, does he work for this company or that company? Is he a formerly part of the army was he in the rangers was he part of the cia something like that did he have a cia handler was somebody paying him right did he have any any huge monetary uh you know amounts that were transferred into his bank account or whatever something like that was he receiving training in some places you know these are all things that you'd be able to research you'd be able to find out right i mean have they done any of this after 24 hours? No. Will they actually do any of this? No. You know why? Because conspiracy theorists don't actually re research shit. They make shit up. 
They don't research things, right? They invent shit out of whole cloth. I'm sure someone may, if they wanted to, put together a backstory for this kid. And you might find out that, yeah, he was a terrorist, blah, 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 blah. Or he was Barack Obama's secret fucking lover, whatever. They'll, they might come up with some dumb shit that has no basis in fucking reality if they wanted to. But at this point, they don't even have to. They just have to, like, some asshole on Twitter just has to say it. Democrats did this. And now if somebody else is going to read this and they're going to believe for the rest of their fucking lives that this was a false flag put together by Democrats, whoever the hell Democrats are supposed to be. I don't know who. Nancy Pelosi or some shit, I guess. Fucking ridiculous, folks. Why? Because the dude's skin color is wrong. Is wrong. Because this fucking idiot here, Travis, Travis and Flint, is too fucking stupid to understand that white supremacy is an ideology and it's not actually tied to your skin color. Too fucking stupid to understand that. Moving on. Here's another one. From Clandestine. Oh, look at his look at his Twitter. He's got like a, a little avatar with a guy in a hat. Like the cigarette smoking man from the X Files or something, right, folks? He's uncovering the actual real truth here, Clandestine. You know. Getting the info that they refuse to tell you and that what they don't want you to know. You're telling me someone drove a U-Haul with nothing but a Nazi flag in it, tried to ram it into the White House, got stuck on a curb, and then the police spread out the flag on the pavement so the media can get it in the shot. The left needed a narrative change. They got it. I mean, plain as day, folks, right? <laughs> it's obviously a false flag. I mean, I mean, if, if he can't understand it, if it doesn't make sense to him, then it must be a false flag. That's the other thing. It's like... Another thing conspiracy theorists will tell you and shit, they'll say, well, just use your head. Use common sense. Does this make sense? Well, I got news for you guys, right? The world doesn't follow common sense. The world doesn't make sense. At all. Creepy, weird, and wacky shit happens all the time for no fucking reason. People do stupid things. They start wars over the dumbest fucking shit. They murder each other over the stu stupidest fucking things. They believe the dumbest fucking shit. You know. Sun gazing for fuck's sake. I made a video three weeks ago about people who think that they can just get all of their food and water. Like they don't need to eat. That all they have to do is look at the sun for five minutes a day or some shit and then that's it bam don't have to eat anymore there's people that like think that they can just like get all of their energy just from breathing they're called breathinarians right and all they have to just drink water and breathe like they're fucking trees or plants or something and they think they don't have to eat anymore and there's people starving themselves to fucking death and starving their children to death because they think that they can just like use photosynthesis or some shit <laughs> and not have to like eat food People believe stupid fucking shit, folks. The world doesn't make sense. Yes, it, it is very, very plausible to me. All right, I'll, I'll just, for the record, it is very, very plausible for me that this guy, Kandula, is actually a Nazi. Yes, right? Because we've seen it happen. We had that guy last week. You know, the guy, the Texas Allen shooter. We have Kanye West, for fuck's sake. Who's probably, Kanye West has probably done more for white supremacists and for Nazis in general in the last, you know, couple of months than the white supremacist movement has managed to accomplish in 20 years. He's probably done that. He's probably spread that message far and wide. And then we get people, you know, sitting there in Los Angeles, probably the most diverse city in the entire country, hanging signs off the freeway saying Kanye was right. Okay. It's very, very highly plausible to me now in this day and age where somebody can is bombarded with right-wing, racist, conservative Nazi bullshit from every direction that they could be radicalized even when they're not a white person. Just go spend five minutes on 4chan for fuck's sake. You think every single person on 4chan making Nazi jokes and posting memes of, like, frogs in the SS uniforms and stuff like that. You think every single one of those people is white? Fuck no. No, they're not. <laughs> they're not all white. No, they're all of all races and all, all creeds and all colors from all countries, right? Very often, you'll see people from other countries in Asia, in Africa, for fuck's sake, 
posting the exact same things. Posting Hitler frog memes and crap like that. And memes of Donald Trump as the God Emperor. And uh, memes about Jews and that kind of thing. All over the fucking place. No. It's highly, highly plausible to me that, yes, actually, this guy actually is a real-life dyed-in-the-wolf fucking Nazi. <laughs> right? I mean, we don't really know. All we, have, all we see is that he has what he's actually said to the cops and this flag. We don't know how he got that way, but if I was a betting man, that's how I would say. Moving on. Here is DC Drano posting the exact same shit. Right. DC Drano, who, if you don't know who he is, he's a entertainment lawyer that has connections to Toilet Paper USA and seems to be a rising star on conservative social media. This is Cy Varish Kandula, the Missouri man who drove a U-Haul into the White House gates. The media referring to him as a white supremacist after authorities found a Nazi flag in the vehicle. Just wanted to share his driver's license photo like it's supposed to speak for itself, right? And once again, folks, if you didn't know, if your conception of a white supremacist is a Nazi skinhead, then it makes perfect sense to you, doesn't it? We've shown, folks... Like, I think we've demonstrated pretty well over the last... I think we've seen it demonstrated pretty well over the last couple of... Uh, the last five or six months. You don't have to be white to be a Nazi. You don't have to be white to be a white supremacist. <laughs> right? But, uh, yeah, it all must be a conspiracy theory then. That's such bullshit, folks. couple more of these. Here's a guy named Matt Wallace... Fuck DC Drano. Let's get rid of that asshole. Here's a guy named Matt Wallace. Let me get this straight. You're telling me the guy... Oh, wait. Did we already look at this one? Yeah, we already looked at this one. Basically, they're all posting the same shit. You notice what Matt Wallace said, and that other guy Travis said, and that other guy clandestine said. You notice they're all posting the same thing, right? That's, that's another thing that you see on the right wing a lot, is that they'll just take the same talking point and... It'll get reposted over and over and over and over. Now, I don't think these accounts are bots. I highly doubt that these accounts are bots. I think what's happening is that these people are all going to the same source. They're all seeing the exact same thing that uh, somebody like Matt Walsh. Like, they'll go watch Matt Walsh, and then they'll go make... All of them will go out and make tweets tweeting the exact same shit that my, Matt Walsh said or Ben Shapiro said or fucking something like that, right? And I think that's what's going on here. I think somebody, some conservative talking head moron out there, you know, Candace Owens or some shit, made this point and now all of these fucking brain-dead assholes are going out and posting the same point like they thought of it independently or whatever, <laughs> right? When they really fucking didn't. There's no reason why... Any of this, I think, is unbelievable. I mean, do the cops normally, like when you have a big truck like that and they're investigating things, do they normally keep it all hush-hush and secret or whatever? I mean, maybe if there was a dead body in there, they wouldn't have brought it out. But a flag? And it looks like some other things, backpacks and stuff? I mean, seems to me that they would put it on the ground so that they can take pictures of it. Stuff at the scene. Seems like a perfectly fucking reasonable thing to me. I mean, I don't know, am I wrong? <laughs> right? Is that something that the uh, the police don't do? That they don't lay stuff on the floor and take pictures of it? I thought they did that. <laughs> I don't know. It, it just seems to me sometimes you have these guys have to stretch it a lot in order to come up with... And that, that is something that conspiracy theories, theorists do all the time, is that they, they make connections where there's no connections. They... They stretch the truth to fit their narrative. Because it's not about the actual truth when it comes to conspiracy theories. It's about the narrative. It's about what makes you feel good. Does it align with what I'm saying politically? Then they judge it to be true. Uh, moving on. Here's one. Another person who can't understand that you don't have to be white to be a Nazi. AJ Steele Show. This is the white supremacist who attempted to drive a U-Haul complete with a Nazi flag into the White House. His name is Cy Varnith Kandula. I'm glad to know these white races finally figured out how to good, get a good tan. 
all having a good laugh about this. I mean, this is like the second guy in the as many weeks who was a white supremacist who turned out not to be white, who was engaged in an act of violence. You think we'll get another one next week? <laughs> That's the other thing when it comes to conspiracy theorists is that it doesn't matter how much proof you have to the contrary. If it doesn't fit the narrative, it gets ignored. I think there could literally be 50 non-white Nazis out there who engage in terrorist acts and these people would still be in denial about this. Because it has to fit the narrative. That's, that's the thing. If it fits the narrative, then it's true. If it doesn't fit the narrative, it gets ignored. And that's the other pattern you see all the fucking time, you know, when it comes to why to, to, to conspiracy theorists, you know, another example of that Benghazi, how many hearings did we have about Benghazi? Like what? Two, three, four, five, 17 millions and millions of dollars have been spent investigating fucking Benghazi. They dragged Hillary Clinton in front of Congress, in front of Congress to testify for like fucking eight hours straight and they found nothing after all of these investigations after hours and hours and hours of testimony after millions of dollars spent trying to find any form of wrongdoing what whatsoever they found absolutely no wrongdoing at all yet there's people out there despite all of the evidence to the contrary because this this is what that is that's that's evidence despite all of that evidence that nothing illegal happened. There's people to that to this day, you know, what is it, 10 years later, who still think that was the biggest example of government corruption and that Hillary Clinton is a traitor and she should be executed for that and all that other shit. <laughs> it doesn't matter how much evidence you have to the contrary. If it doesn't fit their narrative, they, they will blissfully ignore it. Just to show you that it's all not Christians, conservative Christian, fundamentalist Christian um, nationalists who can be assholes. This is from a guy named Indic Monk. Let's read what he has to say. This is Cy Varsnith Kandula, the man who drove you all into the White House gates. Media calls him a white supremacist after they found a Nazi flag in the vehicle. Kandula is an Amber Embedkarite from the cast of Dalit Diva, Dalit Diva, excuse me. Amber Carite, hate has real world consequences. Hashtag BHM, Bihim Terrorism. What the fuck does all of this mean? Well, in India, they have a caste system. And there's four the four castes, which I don't really know what they are off the top of my head. And then there are people who are outside of the caste system who... Some of them, sometimes they say they form a fifth cast, and those are the untouchables. And that's what uh, Dalit means. This person here, Dalit Diva, is a anti-caste activist who's on Twitter, who is fighting. Because even though the caste system is something that was outlawed like more than you know 150 years ago or whatever there are still activists within India who want to bring that shit back, including this, this guy Indic Monk right here. This guy Indic Monk is someone who, if you look at his thing here, pro-caste activist. Do you see that? He wants to bring back those caste, that caste system in India. So basically what he's saying here is that this guy is an untouchable. And if you see this dude right here where it says M. Ambedkarite, that's actually um, a philosopher who was one of the main opponents of the caste system who, in the early 20th century, even though after it was outlawed in the 19th century, in the early 20th century, they found that there was still a lot of hate and like racism and stuff. Well, I guess you would call it bigotry in India when it comes to people who traditionally came from different castes. So this dude, Amber Karite, was a prominent philosopher who went around and an activist, an anti-caste activist who went around and, and wrote books and gave speeches and stuff like that to spoke out against the caste system and how it was unfair and that kind of thing. So what is this guy saying? Amicorite hate has real world consequences. The people, so the people who are standing against the caste system 
are the ones who are spreading hate, according to this guy. Now remember, according to the caste system in, Hindu, in, in Hinduism, the untouchables were basically people that were beneath. They were like animals. They were considered unclean. And they were reserved to do jobs like leather working, working with dead animals, cleaning up dead animals, scavenging, sanitation. And the, the, the really notorious thing about caste systems is that you're born into it. It's not a way, it's not something that you can marry out of. It's not, it's not like you can go win the lottery, get a whole shitload of money, and then suddenly you're not an untouchable anymore. It's like, no. If you did somehow, say, in times past, two, three hundred years ago, if you were an untouchable and you came into a lot of money, they would take it away from you because you were an untouchable. They would force them to wear shitty clothes. They would force them to do these jobs. It's like, it wasn't like you had a choice. You had to do it like that. If you lived there, you had to do it, and your only alternative was to leave. But where are you going to go? Where are you going to go? It's the 17th century in India. Where the hell are you going to go? You can't just get on a plane and fly away someplace. No, you live there. This is what you were forced to do. And if you didn't like it, they killed you. That's what a caste system is, right? This guy wants to bring that shit back. Okay. And he's saying that the people who are standing up against this this sort of traditional religious systemic bigotry are the ones with the real hate. Sounds a little familiar, doesn't it? Kind of sounds like when conservatives say that the liberals and the woke mob are filled with hate. Oh, uh, they don't they they can't stand on ideas. They don't like it when other people have opinions better than their own. Kind of sounds like the exact same shit, doesn't it? It sounds like the side who is actually benefiting from systemic racism and bigotry trying to project that on the people standing against it. That's what it looks like to me. I don't really know a lot about politics in India. I don't even really know that much about Hinduism, to be honest, besides the absolute basics of it, right? But it doesn't really sound that much different, doesn't it? Kind of sounds like we all have the same problems, doesn't it, folks? Just under different guises. <laughs> I can definitely understand hatred and bigotry. It's not like we're the only country on earth that has these problems. Every country has it. Even in a country like India, where everyone is basically the same race. There's not really any you know reason to be racist in India. Even then, when you have a monoculture there's still ways that people find to hate each other. Anyway, fuck this guy. Fuck this Indic monk guy. What a fucking asshole. Fundamentalists of all stripes. And, and of every religion. They're all assholes. Fuck each and every last one of them. Here's a guy named Greg. Greg has noticed a pattern. Greg Pierce, our last white supremacist, was a Mexican guy who posted on a Russian social media site no one's ever heard of about being a Nazi and a fan of big conservative influencers. Our newest one is a brown guy who crashed an MTU hall into the White House barricade, and the only thing inside it was a Nazi flag that they proceeded to lay out on the ground for a perfect photo op. Looks like Greg has cracked the code, huh, folks? <laughs> Look out, Detective Greg is on the fucking case. <laughs> Greg does not understand the actual dynamics of ideology <laughs> and how it applies to real people in real life. Did you know that there was a group during World War II of actual Jewish people who aligned themselves with the Nazis? Did you know that? Let me see. What were they called? They were called the, uh, let's see, it was the German Jewish... Association of German National Jews. That's what they were called. They were founded in 1921 by a guy named Max Newman. And basically, he was the chairman off and on up to 1935 when the association was dissolved. They were conservatives. They were close to the monarchist German National People's Party. And basically, they associated themselves with the Nazi party. 
So even all the way back then, in World War II, in Nazi Germany, when Jewish people were be putting were getting segregated into into ghettos and having all of their property taken away, and then they were being put in cattle cars and shipped off to be murdered in an industrial capacity. Even then, when that shit was happening, there were still people of the oppressed class, <laughs> Jewish people, in this case, Jewish people, who were aligning themselves with the actual oppressors, with the Nazis. Funny story, the guy, uh, Newman, the Association of German National Jews was declared illegal and dissolved in November of 1935, and the guy, Newman, was arrested by the Gestapo and imprisoned at the Columbia concentration camp. Eventually died of cancer in 1939. So yeah, that's what happens. <laughs> if you think that you're going to be one of the good ones, if you think that, if you think that aligning yourselves with fascists when you're part of the other is going to work out for you, just look at what happened to Max Newman. I'll put a link to that down to the Wikipedia article down in the chat here if you guys want to check it out it's interesting stuff there you go everybody maybe we'll do a whole stream on that I mean all I've done is read the Wikipedia page but it would be nice to actually read maybe I'll read a few books on it or something here's one this is very interesting this is from Native America Con Driver of the U-Haul truck with a Nazi flag in it jumps curb near the White House. Second pick is what the mainstream media is reporting. So, this is complete and total bullshit. There have been zero media out outlets at all who posted this clearly made-up picture here on the right. This is an AI-generated picture. Okay, it, it is. You can tell that this guy went to chat GPT or whatever and said, show me a picture of what this guy would look like as a, as a white person and created it. I can tell just by looking at it that it's AI generated. <laughs> it's obvious bullshit. No mainstream media outlet at all has done this. This guy just made this shit up. Completely made it up out of whole cloth. But I guarantee you, you will see this meme pop up in discussions about this. I guarantee you that if you were to go to, say, the Donald.win or whatever, or if you were to go to the CD parts of Reddit, or if you were to go to, you know, places like that where these idiotic conspiracy theory racist fuckheads actually congregate, you'll see people passing this around. And although some people make fun of it, some of them won't, some of them will believe it, and there will be people who will believe this until the day they die now. That the mainstream media, they notice how he doesn't say who they are, he knows how he doesn't link to anything, he doesn't, he doesn't link to any CNN articles, for example, or MSNBC or something where they're actually posting this picture here, right? But there'll be people who believe this horseshit now, forever. It doesn't have to be true, folks. It just has to make you feel good. <laughs> Here we go. Here's one. This is from Charlotte N. on Twitter. This reeks. This has lame attempt written all around. No time to set up a shooting spur somewhere. Like she would have preferred it if they actually did do a mass shooting and killed a bunch of people. <laughs> Is that what I'm supposed to be taking home from this? That's what I'm bringing home from this tweet, is that this person, Charlotte Ann, right, would appreciate it more if the CIA would just get a crazy, insane, white supremacist person to just go murder a bunch of people. And then she'll find that more believable than a Indian person who was radicalized on the internet and obviously has a few screw loose, screws loose. Right, trying to do what he did. I think. I mean, I don't know if these people actually read this shit before they post it. They probably don't. I don't think this person, Charlene Ann, even thought about 
what she's saying actually means at all. I don't think she took two seconds to even to even take the single brain cell she has and rub it against itself in order to kind of like even think about for half a fucking nanosecond about how like hateful and what a bitch this tweet makes her look like. <laughs> the most horrible fucking people ever. That's who we're dealing with, folks. The stupidest, most horrible fucking people on the face of the fucking earth. <laughs> this woman is going to die alone and, co and cold. In, uh, you know, with everybody that she's ever known fucking ostracizing her. <laughs> Seriously. At least I hope so. One more and then we'll call it a night. This is from Stop the Endless War Machine. Well, gotta hand it to him, the government follows their own diversity programs even with hiring psyops. I don't know, folks. I don't even think these these people even believe it themselves sometimes. You know. Here's the thing, right? Let's turn this shit off. Let's turn all of this shit off, right? No matter what happened, they would have defended this person. If the person actually was a white person, they would have defended it. If the guy actually managed to break into the White House, they would have defended him. If he managed to actually kill a couple of people, they would have defended him. If he somehow even managed to, like, run into the White House and then, like, run his truck right into the Oval Office against all odds and actually run over Joe Biden, they would be, they'd be calling him a hero. Let's not forget that. This is what these people want to happen. These people want there to be violence, right? We're past that point of we should not be trying to, like, pussyfoot around it anymore. We shouldn't be in denial about it. I mean, a lot of the, the mainstream pundits will still try to bullshit you and say that, no, that's not what we want. The Matt Walsh's, the Ben Shapiro's, the Charlie Kirk's, they'll never, they're, they're too chicken shit to actually admit it. They'll never actually say it, but their followers fucking will. They want, they, they're, they're defending this guy and they're calling this thing a false flag and all that other crap because this is what they secretly want to happen. And they want to do it themselves. These are the people that want there to be a civil war. They want there to be a race war. They want to go out and start shooting and murdering commies and leftists and blue-haired feminists and trans people and all that stuff. That's what they want to do. They want that to happen. So when some fucking insane nutbag goes out and actually fucking does it, they all jump behind him and defend him. Some piece of shit strangles a guy on a fucking subway who was having a mental breakdown. They'll get together and they'll defend him. Right? Some fucking asshole kid brings a gun to a protest, shoots two people because somebody threw a water bottle at him. They'll defend him. Some redneck piece of shit purposely runs a red light, drives his car into a fucking into a crowd and then murders a guy who was trying to defend his fucking his quadruple amputee wife from getting run over they'll defend him because this is what these people want to actually fucking happen. We're past the point. We have to like be ready for that and we should stop, we should not be in denial as a country. We have a serious fucking problem in this country. You know, if this was 2014, 2015, 2016, four, five, six years ago, I might have sat there and said, yeah, this is just one lone nutbag. Look at this crazy person. But no, no. Not when shit like this happens every fucking week. Every goddamn week, there's another example of some crazy, conservative insane, racist, Nazi piece of fucking crap doing one thing or another. Shooting people at a mall. Shooting power stations to stop a drag show. Trying to bomb a, 
bomb the the Democratic National Headquarters, whatever. There was another story just a few days ago. Some guy that got caught trying to fucking like throw a model of cocktails at a Democratic office. Right now, now a fucking crazy person rents a truck, tries to run over the president. Every fucking week, this shit is happening. America's screwed. Absolutely screwed. It's like a one-sided war. <laughs> it's a one-sided war because what... Are, I mean, there's not even any protests going on. That's the thing. All right? What are, what's, what's the left doing about this? You know, fuck the government. The government's not going to do shit. Okay, forget it. Cops aren't going to do anything. Government's not going to do anything. They're not going to do... They're not going to do anything until they start burning stuff down or whatever. So fuck them. What, what is the left doing about it? You know? You know, I made a video a long time ago about, uh, it was titled, Why I Can't Support Antifa. And basically, the, I made this video in like, in like 2017, right? It's still on my channel. And it had to do with, well, I can't support them because they're violent, right? Well, who's the ones who are being fucking violent now? You know, maybe we need Antifa out there. Maybe we need people out there willing to stand up and defend themselves against shit like this. Right? Because we're not getting the help we need from the government, the cops, the government, the CIA, the FBI. They're not doing anything to stop these fucking maniacs. Politicians aren't doing anything <laughs> to stop this crazy stuff, right? Are we getting any kind of gun control laws? No. Get any kind of, uh, you know, any special task force to, like, you know, run the fucking white supremacists out of the military, shit like that, right? FBI task force to go out and infiltrate these groups, shut them down? No. Yeah, they'll go, they'll go do that to BLM groups. They won't do it to the actual people who are out there fucking murdering people, shooting them and running them over. Fuck no. Maybe it's time we start defending ourselves, is what I'm trying to say. I don't know. I am not allowed to. Uh, I'm, I am not allowed to advocate for violence on YouTube, and I really don't want to anyway. I think violence is not the answer, right? Especially when it comes to political violence. That is, no bueno. Do not engage in political violence. Do not engage in political violence. Just in case you were wondering. I said, do not engage in political violence. Self-defense is not political violence. It's self-defense. Maybe we ought to all ought to think really long and hard about how we can defend ourselves from people like this fucking maniac. Right? Because next time, that's the other insidious thing about terrorism, folks, especially domestic terrorism, is that you don't know when it's going to happen. That's how they like it, by the way. That's the whole point of terrorism, is in order to terrorize people. So you don't know when it's going to come next. Will it be you next time you go to a shopping mall? Will it be your kid when they're in school with some fucking crazy white supremacist insane person going to bust into their school with a fucking machine gun? Will it be you walking down the street and a crazy guy is going to run you over the truck because he doesn't like the color of your skin? The country truly is fucked. We have, seriously, I, I mean, I don't even think we're going to last that long, to be honest. I don't know. Doesn't mean you give up. Don't give up. Do not give up. Go out there, protest. Go out there, vote. Engage in direct actions. Use all of the tools at your disposal to effect change. It's never too late. And you only lose when you stop fighting. But uh, I don't know, folks. Be careful and protect yourself. I guess that's all I got to say. Hello, folks. If you like what I do and you want to support the channel, please consider buying something from my SD shop, supporting me on Patreon, liking and subscribing, and checking me out across my social media links listed below. Thank you all so much, and see you next time.